Uh, okay, hi kids. It's been a minute since I've done a video, but I uh, figured it was time to do one. Weather's nice today. There's a lot of stuff I've put off all winter long. You guys haven't seen me most of the winter. And I got these struts in. Uh, I put the passenger side in yesterday. Everything went wrong. It kind of looked like this. Uh, it's clearly the wrong spring. Great. The springs that I ordered for the front end are the wrong springs. They're actually for the rear. And I really can't find front springs. So we're gonna go with my old springs. I put the strut together and I forgot to put the bellows in it, the, the little cover. I messed up the tie rod end, so I had to go get a new one. Some days it just goes like that. You really wonder if you should be working on your own car at all. So today I went to the auto parts place. I went to AutoZone. Tried to buy some springs for the front of the Honda Element. I said, no, no, we don't have springs. We have quick struts. Oh, uh, that's dangerous. Got a big lecture about how dangerous it is to work on your own struts. So I left, went over to Napa. And I got the same lecture. Oh, we have quick struts. No, I just need springs. Oh, you don't want to take those apart. Oh, they're just going to fly apart and take your head off. Literally, the guys literally said, oh, it'll take your head off. I love being lectured by the parts guys on how dangerous it is to work on my own car. I buy a lot of stuff from AutoZone. It's generally my first place to go because there's three of them very close to my house. And uh, so I can I can get what I'm looking for, pretty much. Gotta move this bracket from this strut over to that strut so I've got somewhere to put my uh, my uh, my sensor. Put the wheel back on. This side will be ready to go. We'll do the other side. It'll be awesome. So now that that side's together, hopefully we can put this side together. Less drama. I hate drama. Okay, we're good. This is our new strut. Got some hardware. Interesting. I didn't think the other one had any hardware. Let's take a look. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I may want that. Huh. Okay. We'll have to put that in. Here in Yet another example of how everything yesterday just went totally sideways. But let's see. It is currently uh, a quarter after 12. So let's see how long it takes me to replace this strut. <clears throat> I'm going to zap this bracket off. So we'll take this bracket loose. First off, 10 millimeter. that little nut or bolt down there is also a 10 millimeter. That's the speed sensor. There's your speed sensor. Came out very easy. One of my last videos was me showing how those don't always come out easy. 12 millimeter to take the brake line loose. Now I'll take this tie rod in loose. really wish that AutoZone had had two tie rod ends because I'd like to have replaced this one as well. This one's actually got a torn boot. But they only had one. So one was all I could do. Here's my Harbor Freight ball joint splitter thingy. Scale. Ah. Ah. 
trying to hold that nut with your hand while hitting the other side of it with an impact is a good way to mess up your fingers. I've done that myself. Why are you falling down like that? Lazy. He's lazy. These kids today, I swear. Don't even stand up to work on the car. Come on, get up. Bottom side loose. Three nuts on top, and we're good to go. That's it, kids. Clamps, these are rentals from AutoZone. I went and got them for $60. And when I take them back, they will give me my $60 back. Put the other one on. Alright, that's probably good enough. Yeah, it's got enough, it's got enough compression to actually move inside the casing. So that should be enough. Zap this off and we should be ready to go. There are instructions on this that tell you that the way you get this thing to uh, come out of its compressed shipping state is by turning this, probably half a turn, and it'll just pop out of there. So let's see if that's true. Looks like it might be heat treated. Half, quarter turn is really all it took. And there she goes. She's getting excited. Swap all this over to that. We'll start with the piece that I forgot on the other one, which was this uh, bumper and cover. There. Now we can slide the spring on. Then the bearing and the cap. See guys, it's not complicated. Somehow I've managed to do all this while keeping my head, even though you can't see my head. You're gonna have to take my word for it that I still have a head. Now, I told you before, we got a new washer and a new nut. Now your originals have a um, <clears throat> an Allen key that can go in here. I think it's like a six millimeter, five millimeter, somewhere in that range. You hold it with that while you take the nut off. I did it with the impact, which does it quick enough that you don't have to do that. I'm not going to put this together with an impact. This one does not have the Allen key hole. It has just a regular old hex, probably a 3 8 or something along those lines. So I'm going to use these two crescent wrenches, my spud wrench and my little tiny cheesy Chinese drop forged bestest American wrench wrench. that now before we take all this apart we want to make sure our spring is actually in this notch that's where it goes that's where it rests and now it's time to uh, reassemble these things are marked they will fit on either left or right but this needs to point left or right depending on which side you're putting it on I think it's important to remember that this will only go in here one way and it's marked it's got a little l and a little r to tell you whether it's right or left 
if you're trying to put this in here and the holes don't line up, turn it. And if that doesn't work, turn it again. And eventually it's gonna go in because it'll only go in one way. So, so that's the thing. I'm starting to run into this same issue again. It's like the tie rod is misshapened here. Like the, the joint separator like mushroomed the threads somehow. Of course, this nut doesn't look too great either. Let's see if I get a better one. All right, I put these vice grips on there and I've uh, gripped the hell out of this thing. Let's see if I can put it in a little bit of a bind and allow me to tighten this nut. Now, I'm definitely gonna put a new tie rod in here, but I don't have one right now. So I kinda need this one to go on for right now. I'll get a new one and we'll swap it out and then I'll get an alignment. Jeez, always something. Again, normally I would not recommend this, but I am in a bind. So, we're going to go with that. It worked. I don't know for how long. I'm going to go ahead and get a new one so I can replace that because I don't like any of that. All right. Great big bolts go in here and then we're just about finished. So to remove and disassemble and reassemble the strut, put it back and deal with this pain in the ass ball joint uh, has taken me 45 minutes. So that's not bad, right? Big nuts. I'm getting better at not destroying my speed sensors. Uh, hook up the brake line again. Where's my wrench? Where's my wrench? Oh, you're using it. Give me that. 12 millimeter. 10 millimeter. And just slap the old wheel back on and take her for a spin. All right, kids, test drive. Let's see if we've got any improvement in the various wanderings and rattlings of the front end of this thing. Yeah, I got a little weird steer going on here. Definitely gonna need an alignment. More responsive. I wanna find some bumps to hit, because I had some kind of weird rattle going on. Every time I hit a bump, I get this thump thump on the front passenger side. Honda elements are known for their interesting noises that they make. Handling better though, it is handling better. Those old front struts were worn slap out. Much better. Much better. So that's it for this week, kids. New struts. Finally got everything new on the front end except for springs, and I think my springs will be okay. So we'll just stick with those springs for now. See you next week.